Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is not your first time here, you should hit subscribe before you realise how absolutely fucking garbage this content is. If you've already subscribed and you're back for more, you may want to seek some professional help. But in either case, thank you very much for being here. I do really enjoy the fact that I know that people come and watch these videos and judge me every second of the way. We're here today for a nice budget variant of the Dino Dolls, Dinosaur, Shadows combo of the two of the nicest things in the world. Fucking splat them together, you get dino dolls. And they're really budget friendly, they can be run on a budget, that's always good to know. Of course there are some more expensive options that you could include in the decks, but we'll get through that in a moment when we look through the deck profile. If you're watching this video and you decide you want to run out and buy some of the singles for this, consider using Jam Jam Cards UK. They are the channel sponsor, a link in the description for a nice discount on their eBay store. It's also worth noting as well that if you play the Pokemon TCG, they do also have some singles on there for that too. But that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck into the deck profile. Before we get started, let me first just make a note. Apologies if you can hear any noise in the background, especially if it sounds like there's a fucking jet engine. My laptop is very loud. And as a result, you can often hear the fans on the audio. Hopefully we can clip that out though with the editing, but if we can't, my apologies on that. But that's enough for me, you want to hear what exactly we're running and why we're running it. Like I say, it's a budget option variant of the deck. You can consider some other options in there as well, depending on what you'd like to do. That's entirely up to yourselves. Again, there are less budget-friendly options that you can run. This is just the most budget version that I could run without being a complete pile of dog shit. So we start off with two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. This card is still absolutely bonkers. Definitely one of the best box monsters in the game currently, and definitely one of the best of all time. I think two copies is perfectly fine. You really don't want to clog on it. You want to be able to get it as and when it's needed, rather than have it in your hand all the time. So really good option to have in there, and I think a two, it's absolutely fine. We're running a single copy of Coatlas here because it searches pill, and the fact that it also becomes a negate if you needed to. If you want to set up a going first board, it gives you an option. And that is one of the things I really like about this deck, is that going first or second is perfectly fine. Of course, Shadow Fusion gives you most of the benefits from being able to go second, so that is usually the route you're going to want to go down. But if you know you're playing against a deck where you need to go first, no fucking problem. We've got plays for that too. Quite this is just a really good option for that kind of scenario. And of course, it's a big body as well, which is something to make use of. We're running triple copies of Soul Eating Over After. I think this is pretty much self-explanatory. This card's absolutely insane. If they ever hit this on the list, this deck is fucking dead. Every Dino variant is dead without this card. It is so, so incredibly strong. And uh, you need to play it at three. There's no question of that. Running a single copy of Giant Rex because being able to banish it is fucking broken. Just free materials. You can go into rank four plays nice and easy. It's just it's just a good fucking option. I like this card, man. It's it's I think it's important to play in basically any dino variant that you can. Running triple copies of Miscellaneous Horus. This card is absolutely insane. What doesn't it do? It gets you summons from the deck, it protects your cards, it does absolutely everything you could possibly need. This card is broken. A lot of people calling for it to get hit again on the list. Personally, I wouldn't like to see it. I really like dinos. I really like them being involved in the meta. I really like the fact that they're budget friendly because not everyone has access to every card. I can certainly appreciate that. Fortunately, I'm in a position where that isn't an issue for me anymore being sponsored, but once upon a time, this was a big fucking deal and a deal breaker if I wanted to play a deck. This is a good option for a budget option deck, and this gives you a way to play with meta decks. We have two copies of Baby Sarasaurus in here. You could run Petit or whatever the fuck it's called, especially if you want to play Pancratops as well. I've omitted both of those from this particular build, but they are options you can go into. Baby Sarasaurus, on the other hand, I think two of is perfectly fine. You could up it to three, but I don't think it's worth it unless you're playing the Lost World variants, which we're not here. Uh, and I think the two copies is perfectly fine for being able to get those basic bits of combo going. And we have a single copy of Jurak Aolo. This is probably one of the least budget-friendly cards in this deck, but it's still not particularly expensive. It is for what it is, all things considered, but it's a really good option in there. I mean, it's an extra extender. It's, you know, a free body that you can get on board. If you're running Halka Fibrax, it's an option for that as well, given that it's a tuner. Um, you know, it's just got multiple basic usages that people don't necessarily take into consideration. We then move on to our Chanel package. It's actually relatively small, but bigger than what we would traditionally use in these Mostly because the newer support is worth it, and mostly because the Shadows are as strong as they are currently. Particularly with the new Master Rule, I say new Master Rule, it's been around for a while now. But being able to use fusions in basically any zone opens up a lot of possibilities, which means these are less dead than they were before. 
With that in mind, we're running a single copy of Beast. You could easily play two copies of this. It's really strong. One copy of Shadow Dragon. For the most part, you don't need a lot of back row removal, but this gives you an option. Squamata for being able to just dump additional Shadows. Ariel for being able to just manipulate the grave. And Wendy for being Wendy. It's just a really good card. I think for the most part, these are pretty strong options. Hedgehog as well for the same sort of thing. I mean... For the most part, you know what the Shadows do. You've really got to play with them and learn when to use what. It's a bit like using BA. You need to know what cards, when to use, and when. They're all just really good utility monsters. They regenerate resources. They allow you to go into the fusions nice and easy. So having a slightly bigger package than normal is really not an issue in this particular build. Onto our hand traps here. Again, I've tried to keep this budget friendly. So we're running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Um... It hits basically every deck that's out there from Rogue right the way up to the top end decks. To what capacity, it doesn't really matter. It's always got some degree of usage. And I think any deck that you can fit it into, you really should take advantage of that. Continuing along the lines of budget friendly, we're running Effect Veiler. I would probably run Infinite Impermanence or Droplets over this if you have access to those. But Effect Veiler is still really incredibly strong, especially considering we're playing a deck where we ideally want to go second. You can also play the likes of Nibiru if you want to play that as well. Just something to consider, but I think Effect Veiler overall has a bit more usage than some of the other options, particularly on a budget end. We're running triple copies of Shadol Fusion. There's part of me that almost thinks we should be running two of this and three of the other one, but when it goes second, it's just so strong. Being able to dumb stuff from the deck and setting up plays from there. It's a really powerful spell card, and I think that you have to play it at three for the most part. We're running two copies of El Shadol Fusion. This is really good, particularly in the likes of Battle Phase, where you can just drop it, make another fusion, push for even more damage, or at the end of it, go boom, into Winder and lock your opponent out for their next turn. Moving on, we've got Double Evolution Pill. You could run this at one, quite frankly. I would never run it at three. It's way too bricky. I think two is about the sweet spot here. Again, you could chop and change it depending on what you like. Uh, for the most part, though, this is going to be able to get you Conductor or Coatlas. They're, you, they're your two targets, really, here. Um, but again, I think more than two is just not necessary, and I think one is too few. I think two is the good sweet spot here. You run triple copies of Fossil Dig. As long as this card is at three, you need to play it at three. It's Rota for the deck. It's Rota for more than fucking... It, it's better than Rota for this deck. Obviously, we're not running Warriors here, so that's kind of a weird example, but you get the point here. The fact that it can just basically search anything you need access to is really fucking powerful. I'm surprised this card hasn't been hit in any capacity. Running a single copy of Foolish Burial, being able to dump stuff into the grave. We're playing Shadows, we're playing loads of Dinos, the benefit from it, what's not to like. One copy of Call by the Grave because power spells are advantageous. This should be at three in my opinion, but we only have one copy. And whilst we only have one copy, that's exactly what we're going to run. Running a single copy of Upstar Goblin because 39 cards is better than 40. It's more consistency that we really need in a deck that does occasionally have some issues with bricking. So this is a card that you want to have access to where possible. It's also an easy side out as well, so something to keep in mind. And then we round off with our traps here. We have one copy of Rest Shadow Incarnation and one copy of Schism. Uh, these are just two really good important cards for your Shadow engine, being able to Shadow Fusion during your opponent's turn, all that kind of good stuff, regenerating resources. You can send them off uh, construct and all that kind of good stuff it just gives you a lot more options to play with rocky is a little bit less budget friendly at the moment the prices have been spiking on these don't be surprised if we see a reprint around the corner but again they're not impossible to get hold of and given that we've only really got one other card that doesn't fit into that budget category it's probably worth splashing out on we have a single copy of Grista here. This is kind of a weird one for me, but I like the fact that you can dump Miscellaneous Saurus from the deck into the grave. If you need a way to get it into the grave to start off a combination of plays, this can help you get there. And in fact, the effect isn't even that weak. A lot of people choose not to use it, but for the fact that you can just pop Special Summon Monsters is a really nice option. Really, really good. It negates the summon, it pops them. What's not to like? Uh, and I think that it's really undervalued at times for that reason alone. You could run other utility options if you prefer, but I quite like this as one to go for. Running a single copy of App Cologne. This is going to help us with our resources. It's also going to help us switch off opponent's card effects, so what's not to like off that? We have two copies of Construct here. Constructs, Construct, and two copies of Winder. This is actually going to be often how you win your games. You're going to set up that board, particularly with stuff like Ultimate Conductor and a copy of Winder on board. You're normally in a really strong position we have chambara in here because again it's a really budget friendly option if you want to push for additional damage this is going to help you to facilitate that 
We move on to our rank four options. Again, some of these you could chop and change. I'd argue that two of these are mandatory, but I picked the four best ones that I really felt worked well with this particular deck. So, Baguska, if you do find yourself in a tricky scenario, we can make one rank four and do nothing else. This can be a good option to go into to buy you a bit of time. If you're forced to go first against a deck that you know uh, can, can do damage to you going second, you can set this up, force them to do very, very little, and in the following turn, you can start to push for your own damage. You can kind of hit back at decks that can't really deal with this card. We have a single copy of Abyss Dweller because switching off the graveyard is really fucking nice. Being able to do this against certain decks is just a free win, so keep that in mind. And then we move on to the Volzar brothers here, Dolka and Lagia. I assume they're boys, I don't know why. They look like they've got some weird crotch thing going on there. You can make of that what you will. Anyway, Volzar, Dolka and Lagia. These are really good. They are effectively Solemns on legs, so what is not to like about that? One of the most important key cards that you're going to go for in your start of your combos is going to be these guys. Particularly if you're going first, you're going to set up a board that your opponent can't break through. This is a good option to have access to. And then we move on to our links with the deck. Uh, we don't really make a lot of link plays in here. We have Cross Sheep because we can, uh, you know, we go into fusions and any deck that abuses fusion should use Cross Sheep for additional advantage. So we've got that in there. We've got a single copy of IP Masquerade. I definitely don't make it and pass unless you're a fucking idiot like me. Uh, but this game gives you an ability to interrupt your opponent during their turn. Just another option to go into. So I quite like this. And two utility cards often used with IP Masquerade. We've got Nightmare Phoenix for back row removal and Unicorn for spinning cards on their side of the field. And that is it for today's deck profile. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about what you might like to do, what you might not like to do. But either way, hopefully it's been helpful. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've already hit subscribe. Potentially even the notification bell if you really enjoyed it. Or maybe just a little weirdo who's a glutton for punishment and just want to keep looking at this fucking mortifying face. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate it. And this is not the only kind of content that we do. We do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, all that kind of good stuff. We even do these really cool locals vlogs when they're fucking allowed back on. God damn it, you thing that I'm not allowed to talk about without getting demonetized. But again, either way, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.